everybody, it's Cinnamon Coney, your art sharp, and together today you and I are going to paint a landscape during this live show. We're going to do it step by step. I'm going to explain every technique, every color mix, every tool so that you can paint this gorgeous scene along with me at home. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. I really plan for this to be just a really fun Saturday paint along where we have a good time together and we take on some big landscape techniques, but we make them very accessible and easy to understand so you can level up those landscape skills. I think everybody's ready to level up a landscape. Now, yes. Today we're on the 16 by 20. So we're at the easel. I love it when we're at the easel. We're going to be using uh, bigger brushes, bigger canvas. So we get better, bigger impact. It's nice to have some larger paintings in your house on occasion, I think. Mm -hmm. um, how are you feeling today, John? Good. You got your dad jokes locked and loaded? No. Or, or are no. we... I or am, is the community going to be delivering dad jokes Yes, I am. Today? I'm, I'm in 100% uh, cockpit streaming mode. Yeah, what, you, when you, what is it when you're just like uh, sort of winging it? And yeah. Boom, boom. All right, but you probably just want to paint, improv. right? That's improv. Right. He's improv. in it. Uh, uh, yes. See, I learned. Yes. <laughs> so uh, today we are uh, going to hop right in because you guys probably just want to paint. Yeah, whatever you, you say. Paint, relax. 16 by 20 surface. Let's go over the materials real quick. Uh, we've got ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, thalo green, cad yellow medium, cad red medium, dioxazine purple, titanium white, Mars black. And I do expect to get some thalo blue. I'll hold the tube out here so you can see it. And I'm going to put it out a little bit later, though. Okay. I don't need it very early, and so it doesn't need to be there right now. Guess what? what? We're going to break this up into steps, so let's Are put we? up a step. Okay. So these are broken up into chapters. This is especially helpful if you're on a device or you're watching, you can find your chapter and find your place again. Matches the free mini books that we provide come out about seven to 10 days after a live show. Um, and that means that this entire lesson is written out with step-by-step -step photographs so you can paint along at home. Isn't that kind of awesome? That is. You want to know how much that is? Uh, free. Uh, oh, yeah. The cost. <laughs> Free. It's and that service is provided by the patron. So um, to everyone who's come by who's a patron, I want to give a special wave. We really appreciate your help yep. because it helps us do all these free resources that we're able to give to everyone. So it's a special thing that you're doing. All right. Let's just step it up. You did. Step. already stepped. You stepped? All right. Step. So step one, we're going to really kind of sketch in and plan out the location of objects in our landscape. And the first kind of... Uh, location we need to figure out is where the main forest is versus the distant forest mm. i'm going to grab this number eight filbert filbert it's just a big brush and i'll take a little bit of brown paint because that won't bother maybe get a little blue into it. it won't bother anything and if you imagine that this is the halfway point and if you come all the way over here to about uh, the 15 inch mark like kind of almost a hand from the side Right and above the halfway mark, I want you to make a little, little mark in that zone. So slightly so above, high. slightly above, about an inch above the halfway point of your canvas, and over here towards the right thirds. Okay. That is going to be some distant little hill that we're going to talk about. You can sketch that in loosely. Look at us sketch that in loosely with paint. That's fun. Now right in this zone, I'm going to bring in. A little bit of an embankment, which will be coming back, you know, because we're going to be planning our little stream. And let's take that up to about here on the left hand side. All right. A hand up. Landscape painting can be actually pretty easy to draw. And I'm going to provide a traceable for you guys. But you, if you've been wanting to kind of like maybe freehand a painting, this would be a good one to do it. Now, on this side, oh, the stream is sort of interesting. First, it comes. Kind of almost to the halfway point here, right? And then it's going to kind of tuck on this edge and all the way down here tucks in because we're going to have that nice little tree that goes across. Still sort of hmm, just above the halfway point. So this is the halfway point just above that. Let's put a little bank here. There we go. Oh. Now, I know we've got this tree that's going to be coming across from this section to right here. It's going to be pretty big. It's going to yeah. start out real wide here and here. But since I want to paint in that background sky, I'm going to hold off putting it in for a minute. Okay. 
that way that I can kind of really get into the blend of my sky and set the stage for those distant, distant trees. So that would be the next step. Let's sip our coffee. Let's contemplate our reality. I have it tucked in. There you go. John's going to photograph it and let's contemplate our reality. <sighs> Painting is fun. <laughs> John's big reality comments. Painting is fun and you can do it. Remember, we're all on a journey though, and the painting's result is really not about whether you have talent or not, or you're a creative being. Of course you have talent, of course you're a creative being. It's just about having art skills. And there's really only one way to get art skills, it's to paint things. So the number one thing you can stop in your, like where you can stop the progress of your own creative journey is if you don't allow for that learning process, you don't make room for that. If you have great paintings in your heart and you wanna get them out, the best process to that is to do a hundred paintings, do a lot of paintings. You will get there. Everybody gets there. Okay. So remember that as we're going along and the trick of frustration wants to get into your mind, you're going to push that back and we're going to just keep painting. You ready to put up a, oh wait, I forgot to set my coffee. Step two. There it is. Mm. All right. So our sky is very interesting. It's super light. There's a bit sort of an orange zone here. It gets into the yellows and kind of comes orange back here. And up top is a very light blue. So let's start. Let's get a one inch little hog bristle brush. This is just a big boy. It'll paint a lot of sky real fast. I'm going to get it slightly wet. I'm going to grab a towel from my towel bucket, John. Okay. I'm going to reach down here and get a towel. The reason I like to use towels for... Uh, Hog bristle brushes or natural bristles is because they can hold a little too much water for your acrylic painting, and that's frustrating. Now, you, you're going to have gonna... to remember put your splatter shield down. Oh, that's right. Let's put the shield oh, down. Oh, really? oh, there it goes. Maybe down to here. Whoop! <laughs> I'll let your tall arm get that. That's above my, my pay grade. I'm going to continue. We're going to ignore that I did that. Let's um, everybody just paint like nothing happened. Let's be like a cat. <laughs> And be like, I didn't see it. I don't know what happened. Oh, that was funny. Okay. Do, do, do. I'm painting a little white here in the face. <laughs> I don't know if you ever do that too, where you make a mistake and you just like, yeah, I'm not going to even acknowledge that that happened. So I'm putting it's this very fine. light color here in the center so that I can make sure when I add the little bit of yellow, right, that's going to be here. Mm -hmm. we uh, keep it pretty light. I can go a little bit heavier there at the stream, heavier on the outside edge. I want to keep it fairly light right above this point in the stream because that's where the sun's going to be shining through the trees. Look at that. I'm just brushing back and forth, and that back and forth does a pretty good job of me, giving me a very nice atmospheric effect. I'm going to rinse out very well. I don't want a lot of white. I'm going to towel off so my brush isn't carrying so much water that all I get is drips and runs and irritating things down my surface. I'm going to bring a little bit of my yellow and orange together. I'm going to come from the side with this kind of marigold orange yellow. And I'm going to paint that down the hill about three inches above the hill. Because i got to leave room for the blue sky. So what this is, is this is sort of the distant hue of the sky and the forest. Yeah. Kind of playing together. That's what we're seeing. A little bit here. That's good. We're going to just enjoy that. Maybe a little bit more of that so it has a nicer pigmentation. You guys enjoying the process of painting your little paint today? <laughs> Having some fun. Getting this on the canvas. Mary's like, your little paint shield reminds me of those things we used to put in our window <laughs> back. I think that's where the idea came from. Actually, that is exactly what it is. <laughs> it is a vinyl window shade. Just the, you know, basic white vinyl one. And You gotta love it. We looked at all different options and that was the, the best. Actually, I'm taking straightforward. just pure titanium. We did. I couldn't convince him to get the Garfield. I'm taking pure titanium white. 
I thought if you guys had a big funny Garfield, but I guess it's like that's intellectual property we can't have on here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to take white up here. And for the similar reason that just to keep that area light, right? just making sure that there's a little coat of white. And then I'm going to take the smallest, I mean, just the smallest amount of altering blue. I do want a slight blue cast to the sky, but I want it to be super light. Right. This is a bright autumn day. I know my, my team is like, no, not another autumn painting. <laughs> yes, yes, another autumn painting. I have a lot of videos on my channel, but I could always have more landscapes. <laughs> You'll never run out of all the landscapes that you can paint. Maybe a little more blue out here. Mm -hmm. Just enjoy a little process. Look at that. It's wonderful. It is sort of wonderful, isn't it? And now we've got this bright area. We've got a little bit of orange to the outside. We've really worked that out. That's not too bad. Not bad at all. Now, while we're here, we can go ahead and block in the rest of the canvas pretty easily and encompass that into step one. So take your same brush and go ahead and take a little of your cad red and your dox purple. And I want you to paint in all of your little landscape that we're going to be doing leaves on later with this color. Doesn't even have to be neat, guys. Just a place to start. Oh, yeah. But the, at the end of the show, we're going to have to show off your lamp over there. Kimberly's yes. like, where did you get that? Ah, I believe that was at the garage sale or was that one in a resale shop? Um, I, I've got, that was the one that I got the real resale shop that I had to, it was broken. That's right. I so these the, are called rain lamps. They're from the 60s and 70s. They're really fun. This is uh, uh, old Gris Mill. Yeah, that rain lamp. Yeah, this is called the Gris Mill. And we'll show it to you a little later. Just get a little bit of paint there. Look, we don't have to be too, we're not being too picky with ourselves. A little bit darker into the purple. Catch this little corner over here. It's a corner. Like we're not even being too precious about it. And it's very streaky. It's very streaky. We just need to get some basic paint on here. Kind of start blocking in our landscape and making sure that when we go to paint the other things in there, there's a rich color. That is a rich color. Right? A rich base color to start from. Can be helpful to use a bigger brush just because it lets you cover large areas of the canvas. I'm going to rinse this out a bit. And I'm going to come along the edge with my filbert and some diox purple. Just making sure you have a nice stream's edge. You know, like you do. Little stream's edge. Come along here. I can pull that back up into the landscape. Just drag that little brush along. Does not have to be perfect. It should be relaxing, but it doesn't have to be perfect in any way. And then, you know, we have our wonderful waterway that's coming down. And I'll just go ahead and take maybe a little bit of my yellow and red and some brown. So I make taking some orange and brown. And just start to think about 
this zone where our stream is going to be. Mm, the stream zone. The stream zone. Lots of other colors will go here. And we're doing kind of vertical brush strokes. Now, is that a hardware store brush? Um, no, this one actually is an artist brush, but it's kind of exactly like a hardware store brush. Huh. And sometimes the hardware store brushes, uh, we've been testing a bunch of them lately. I'm going to just go along the bottom here. Um, are even better than you think. Mm-hmm. I'll go ahead and take a little. Surprisingly. I'm just going to. They're made with the similar s synthetic fibers that you find in the uh, uh, fine art brushes. Very similar. Sometimes Some exactly the same. Sometimes blended differently. Sometimes blended better. Well, considering that most of the brushes at the hardware store are designed for acrylic paint, I'm just getting a coat onto here, guys. We're going to change abused. this up a lot. To be mishandled and abused and left in buckets of paint. Yeah. They were engineered for... A rougher life. Mm -hmm. Probably much closer to what any acrylic artist is actually doing to their brushes as it is. So I'm just kind of getting a sense of the water here. Here's some things to understand, guys. Uh -huh. And this particular type of painting, this is called a kind of blocking in or an underpainting, right? And what you're doing is... Is there some philosophy? Look, you've already got some water thoughts happening there. There's some philosophy in painting. And one process to get through a painting is to build it in very small incremental parts. Um, there's a, a really lovely artist. I, I think the channel's Fine Art Tips. And if you watch his process of doing realistic pencil, he just starts from one end and kind of goes across. And then there's another kind of thought process where you do like take in the whole of the painting where you bring lots more into it and then build up from there so the process is a little bit faster. It isn't right or wrong, it's just process. So that's why we do it this way, is it gives us a slightly faster result. And I definitely would call this a step. I'm going to okay. rinse out my brush, get some fresh water, put this little brush to the side, I think, for a second. Whoops. Make sure that you wash out your brushes at the end of every painting session. That's a super important thing to do. So for the next part of this, what we need to think about is the way our light is impacting our distant trees and the way atmospheric perspective is impacting our distant trees. And those two things basically, things that are further away are maybe not as saturated, but we also know that things that are in silhouette can be darker, right? So these are things we have to think about. Things that are closer to the light source will tend to go warmer, reds and oranges, especially in that kind of bright, lights we have to think about those things and observe that in nature do we have any questions mm. before we get on to step three let's see uh do you have a brush line i do have a brush line um it's the art sherpa and you can find it uh the website is silverbrush.com and they have some brushes left and they'll tell you where uh there are retailers and they're all over the world <gasps> wow. we even have a retailer in romania we have a awesome six-year-old painter here with us. Hi! She's doing a bunch of paintings for charity. Congratulations Aww, to thank that. Thank you. Thank you for using your creativity to make the world a better place. It's important. We need heart heroes like you. The world desperately needs more. Mm -hmm. And desperately, everyone's desperately. definitely interested in learning more about your experience with those hardware store brushes. Oh, yeah. No, they're fun. I, li I like them. You, you, I like them. We, we got to do a video on them. We do. We bought them, but, you know, it takes us a minute to do a video because we got to think about it. So in this range, right, the trees will be more in the yellow oranges, and you won't even see the trunks all the way through. They'll be a little darker at the trunks, and then as they move further away, they'll get more into the browns and uh, blacks. So let's pick a brush. I'm going to get a number four, speaking of, our Sherpa, our Sherpa round. Have my little towel here. And I'm going to go into my red and yellow. A little brown into it. Now I can always darken the trunks, right? Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's helpful when I'm painting these little distant trees. To come in with my lighter values first, 
Mm -hmm. and then add. Now in the center here, we're going to have so much light coming through that it's almost as if the trunks of the trees become invisible. Oh, wow, I can see. So that's something we just have to think about when we're doing this, when we're painting these distant kind of branches and trees mm -hmm. and elements that could be here. There's a lot happening, man. There's, there's so many distant trees, definitely. Take these down more into my landscape. Lower the trees. You can slow down and really think about this process. In some ways, you will find that doing a bigger canvas can be easier. We're adding little branches. See how we add these little branches that could be kind of glittering or reflecting in the distance? Yeah. That's what we're looking for, little branches that could be glittering or reflecting in the distance. Little branches. Distant forest. On the hillside. <laughs> That's right, my dove. Little branches on the hillside. And I've got a little thicker there, so I'll bring that down. Now, as I go out, right, interestingly enough, I'm going to get into my brown and black. Oh. This is going to get darker, my friends. You are being nuanced. We have to be the nuanced. You can kind of bring some darker value maybe to some of these in silhouettes. You don't want to get too crazy with it, but you can have some stuff going on. But what if I do? I mean, it's your painting, so by all means, don't limit your dreams. Capturing little shapes and essences and branches. You want to have it feel as if... As if there's so much happening. Are you like so inspired by our successful TikTok video that you've decided to be like TikTok guy all day? Is that uh, what's going on? No. What it is is that <laughs> I, I'm, you know, I'm just trying to be part of what you're doing here. And like, there's a lot of buttons to push. And, you know. So that's how tic the tic So if you follow us on TikTok, don't get TikTok <laughs> if you don't already have the app. But if you follow us there. What happened on that video is that's a that's a full lesson video that we had done a while ago and John had been really funny in it. And <laughs> when the video got edited, <laughs> ooh, it stayed funny. <laughs> Always like, check out those trees, man. Well, you're it's so fun to watch you are. It was super well, great. What it is is that I actually really kind of enjoy my job. So I think this is fun. I I think you're right that it's fun. I enjoy the that i don't i mean like we don't take art too seriously kind of for a reason um if if it becomes too serious then you can lose touch of that childlike place that helps you stay in the creativity so if it stays lighthearted, then it can stay easy so laughing is a good part of being in that beginner part of the art journey Make that tree a little bigger, John. Not to get all too No, I think that that's an important thing. And I think sometimes we need to get philosophical. I can move over here and kind of get more into the brown. Maybe this, this branch is a little more into the light. But I, I have about a Bugs Bunny level of psychology that I can apply. You know, apply what you got. When I'm doing branches, I'm trying not to make little forks. I am trying to create little spaces maybe where that's fun. I like to do that. Be playful. I got playful there. We're just creating these sort of distant little spaces that are, when we add these leaves and then we pull these stronger, thoughtful trees in, it's just going to feel like, wow. And if you guys want, I can show you how to make that fallen tree even cooler than I did in the test painting. Oh, yeah? Yeah. More awesome. But you guys all have to say yes until John. Oh, we do want it cooler. Huh. It's 
See how I'm just pulling these little branches out and kind of arcing them out and then I'm very light on my brush so that they're kind of twinkling in and out. Mm -hmm. Twinkles. And I can add the implication and maybe some distant. You can barely see it little trees in the background, right? Yeah. We're already starting to think about, you know, how the far away trees might read. We haven't even gotten our wonderful leaves involved yet. Now, some of these trunks will be more visible and some will not. Some will be less. That's right. Some will be less. So it, there'll be trees more or less. You're a tree more or less. I'm a tree? More or less. I would say I'm more of a tree beard. <laughs> oh, oh, I'm liking these trees today. I'm enjoying them so much. Further out I go, darker these trees will get. Yeah? Mm-hmm. You know what I have to say about that? Stay in the light, Carolyn. <laughs> I'm trying to remake that movie. Notice that sometimes I drag my brush down to create these distant trees. Oh, reference photo. Yes, sorry. Do, do, do. You should have Shh. the painting. Yeah, you have the painting? Uh, I have the reference photo up there. I oh, can you do the painting? Huh? I gave you the painting. Yes, you did. Okay. It's in the reference. Okay, I didn't know. I had just taken it down earlier so that uh, when they were in the break, they could see the, the little rain lamp in the background. See the rain lamp. That is the same rain lamp. Well, one of the rain lamps from our early studio. We had two. Um, the other one is currently damaged, and I'm going to be repairing it. These are just little faraway twiggies, aren't they? Twiggy. She is a funny character. She is a funny character. Interesting read about that one. You can put some trees further back if you want them to be like a little more in the mist. You can put them more into the browns and do them more in a dry brush so that they're there, but they read as far away. Right? We're working on these distant, distant woods. They're very distant. Distant. Some up close, but mostly, guys, it's just some distant woods. Them woods over there. Them woods over there. And I love to make those little upward tree branches. Now, if you end up forking up a tree. You mean like that? Yeah. What do you got to do to defork it? <laughs> well, I would try to make it seem like you meant it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and that fill it was, out. Oh, you did. You just filled that tree out. Just fill it out. But that's what you don't want to do. You don't want the branches to come off all one joint. Mm. You know, what we're doing here, it's okay. These are distant. We've got leaves we're going to be putting in. I might even come back with some orange trees to even put some more in the distance. You know, this is the far away on the hill. Couldn't be more far away, could it? And we're just loosely sketching in. Loosely, loosely. Because we're trying to say that back here... You know, when we do the dry brush versions of them, this could be dead wood or different stuff way back in the distance. Mm -hmm. But what we want it to feel is like this forest is healthy. Yeah. The healthy, healthy forest. A little bit there. And I think I'm also going to add some of my. Kind of orange brown could be some distant little trunks, not too much, yeah, just a thought. Now. 
Let's call that. A, well, mm, I'm going to go ahead and hit the distant leaves too. Yeah. Because they're all kind of in the same thing. So we have some distant leaves and bushes and kind of texture of foliage that's back here. Mm -hmm. Much like everything else, it will be reflected. The light will be reflected around here. As it comes out, we might get more into these like purples and oranges and then be brighter in the orange around there. Let's get a hog brush. Ooh. So I'll use this one today. I've used it before. This is the Art Minds DIY Home Craft Brush for chalk painting. But it's also a pretty good hot mess bristle brush. And it's lovely because um, it gives me a really rough, wonderful leaf texture. So I'm going to go ahead and take a little of my orange and maybe some of my docks purple. Gets me into a lovely fall brown. Let's come back here. Talk a bit, a bit about what could be there. What could be there. Right? One of the things that we don't want to do is just take away all the blue in our sky as we're painting. We've got to learn not to, to do that. So even this kind of sometimes comes into a little bit of a dry brush, doesn't it? Yeah. Some of it is hard edged. You can see the leaves and some of it is maybe not as much. Maybe I'll go a little more kind of orange brown and. Oh, the forest. Can't see the forest for the trees. Ah. Uh. Little bit, little bit, little bit, little bit. Now I'm going to get more into my yellow. Around here, maybe. Whatever's going on with these leaves. What's that brush called? <laughs> this is the Art Minds DIY Home Brush. This is part of a pack of $3 brushes from Michaels. And you can find a set of these chalk paint brushes in Joann's and different craft stores and even art stores. And they're just kind of the cheap, hot, messy little chalk brushes. Huh. And Those what's nice about their hot mess is look at the nice little leaves that they make. They got a perfectly uneven tip. Yeah, they really do. They, they managed to like get none of the hairs to be even, which is super fantastic for this. And we're going to come through here and continue to sort of like kiss with this yellow, right? This yellow has a little moment. It's like a kiss from yellow above. Taking it through here. That yellow is great because that really just feels like that distant light. It does. That we're going to be seeing in our stream. You always get more into the orange as you come down. Maybe speak lightly about it. You can see the brush just creates that distant effect of foliage. It does. It just appears there. Now again, back here into the red and diox purple. Let's come to this far side and build up a layer. This part of the forest is got a lot more distant foliage. It's it's very heavy into what it's got going on. So I, I definitely want well, maybe some deep shadow with more purple in the red. That's the cad red and the diox purple. Mm-hmm. What I'm trying to do is not make really uniform patterns. I'm trying to break up the forest with leaves and let's do that. Well, maybe here but again, we do want some of the blue sky to show through peeking through the forest. Let the, let the blue sky have a little moment. It wants one.
can always get it just a little bit wet. If I do get the brush wet, man, I barely dip it in the water. Mm. You can see that little dip did a lot. And when you have that, then the leaves will become kind of harder and hard edged. So a little more water. I'm going to rinse out and dry off and I'm going to continue on with some oranges through here and lightening that up. This is so pretty. Isn't it lovely? I like how the different layers of tree textures, with the colors. They're really going to come in and we're going to be so glad they're here. We're going to just take the time to paint something. You know, really enjoyable to us. Mm. Now down low, I might go into a deeper orange just so we got some. See how we go? And this does kind of help push some of these trunks back, doesn't it? I'm going to make sure that that's kind of orange down low. I'm not making a uniform series of bushes or distant leaves. I still have to think about tree form, how things are working out here. You know, I know I've got big trees I'm going to be putting in and I've got lots going on, but no reason not to think about it. I love you too, Twix. I'll pick you up in just two seconds. Hi. 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 You How are you? I'm get yeah, I'm getting the insistent visit. Okay. Come here. Everything is fine. You're fine. There she is. You're okay. You're okay. You got you? I got you? Oh, I got you. All right. Yeah, I'm just painting. Yeah, I'm just painting. How are you feeling? Did it touch your stuff again? Did the evil, evil puppy touch all your things and chew your toys and sleep in your bed? Is that why you came to visit me? Come tell. Sometimes we have to tell. Mm. Ever you get any paint in your pet's hair, uh, rubbing alcohol wipes are really useful for getting it out. Uh, baby wipes if you catch it soon enough. But, you know, that's really dependent on you. And make sure that I got a nice kind of sense of far foliage here. Mm -hmm. Kind of swiggling this brush, you can see golding it up. Oh, that's lovely. I think we could call that a step. Rinse our brush out, dry it off, and the painting. Oh, I get that. All right. So, Twix has gotten a new furry sibling. And that furry sibling is a corgi named Shortcake. And Corgi, just she just loves Twix so much. And Twix is just not sure how Twix feels about it. Sometimes we're okay with it. Sometimes we're okay. And then, and then Shortcake will touch something that we like or get petted by a person we're attached to. And it takes a minute to feel better. We're just taking our time and getting used to things because I think we're going to be good friends. As soon as we get used to each other. As soon as we get used to each other, we're going to be great friends, aren't we? Oh, you want to take her? Oh, she needs a cuddle. I'm going to have a sip of coffee. <sighs> I'm also going to stretch my back and look up at the ceiling. <sighs> get the stretch. Oh, I'm sure there's going to be more of this coming up. Okay. <sighs> you got step four? You, well, you can give me a step four, but I'm going to keep stretching for a I'll second. I'll let you stretch. my coffee. I just need a we'll little. We'll have a stretch. It's important on these long painting sessions that you give yourself room to break and not get too overwhelmed in the process so that as you're painting your landscape and you're doing your work, you're not hurting your shoulder, your back, your hips, just any part of you. Because we can get into weird positions when we paint. It's just part of being creative. It is. All right. Mm, no, I need more coffee. Coffee. Any questions? <laughs> I need um, more coffee. 
<laughs> Does anyone have any questions so I can How's drink the, bubble the machine? coffee? Huh? How's the bubble machine? The bubble machine? Where is the bubble machine? We, we took it down because it makes everything wet. And sticky. But we got disco balls. Yes. And, and John's going to set, when he's done rewiring this part here, I'm going to have him film the disco balls going because he did a fun program. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you guys see. I'll post it like on Facebook or something. The disco balls are spinning. A uh, spin. A uh, spinning. They are very festive. Right got a bunch round, of baby. Right round. I'm also just playing hooky. No, no questions. Uh oh, I'm sure there are, but I was over. You were, uh, being, there, you were like, oh, you are fierce. I the am fierce. fierce. Hmm? I think you have fierce. Oh, I'm not sure if they're. I if, am fierce. Yes, well, you are. <laughs> Let's paint. <laughs> All right. Right here. This is a step. We yeah. have begun the next step. We have step. begun the next step. All right. All right. I'm going to add some more sparkle. I'll take this brush with my little white back into my little trees. I'm going to make sure that as I go here, I've got a nice little... kind of sunlight is thinking about coming down kind of vibe going on, right? Mm hmm Looks good. Looking really good. It looks good. I'm happy with it. Rinse out. You know, I can take this time. Huh? I pushed the wrong button. I was trying oh. to give everybody the um, <laughs> graphic. They got a graphic now. I'm going to take this time and get a little bit of my red and yellow and brown again. I'm going to come here and come in a little bit past my embankment. I know I can easily put my embankment back and pull a little kind of reflection forward just while I'm at it. A little hair on there. That's the problem with cheap brushes. I'm wondering, why don't I always do cheap brushes? Hairs. A little more yellow. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a little bit of my purple. A little bit of purple. For those D&D &D players who remember when gnomes were termed from player characters to monsters. <laughs> I'm a monster. Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> <I'm> sorry. <laughs> so just kind of starting to create that little sense of water coming down the way. As we can, maybe take a little brown here. And I'm pulling these down vertically, as you do. Maybe a little bit even into the uh, purple and brown. Just another layer, and you can kind of come back sometimes and just thinking about those little waterways, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Maybe come down here some. I've got a tree to do and some stuff, but I can start to think about all the many layers of my water. The many layers. There's many layers and reflections, my friends. Many layers and reflections. I've got this brush in my hand anyway, so I might as well start working on it. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that's just, you know, that's where I'm at is I'm like, dude, the brush is here. And I can start the fun process of creating water reflections. And you can see it's just sort of a balance between creating the way the light might break mm -hmm. along these spaces. I haven't even put in the trees and it's already cool. It really is. You know, I'm going to come down here, maybe at this far embankment. Let's get some of our kind of ultramarine blue and purple going here because it's much darker at this back corner. That's the ultramarine blue. That we're going to be getting into.
And you can see, even if the colors are a little transparent today, it's mm -hmm. not going to mess with me because this layering effect is going to only work out in my benefit. This really is looking so pretty. Yeah, I think it's going to be really nice. It takes a little minute to put together, but we don't mind, do we? No. So sometimes it'll take me, I like have to work this sort of edge and then I'll pull these lines forward to continue to play with To play with your brain stuff. Shadows and high. Yeah, it did. That's the nice Sometimes it stops your brain. How many of us have trouble just stopping our brain at night? <laughs> Art will stop your brain. Bugging you about all that unimportant stuff you're not caring about today. I found the solution to that. Mm. Watch anything DC. Oh, stop it. <laughs> I've also found there's an added way. They make audiobooks. Oh my gosh. What is wrong with you? <laughs> I listen to audiobooks when I'm painting uh, in design, when I'm designing. And so uh, Neil Gaiman's The Sandman just came out, book one and two, on audiobook. You know, and I wasn't really sure, I'm going to add a little more yellow here, how the comic was going to register. Um, you know, as an audio book, mm -hmm. but for me, it actually has a personal, uh, backstory, right? Um, the character that was drawn that death was based on her name was actually cinnamon. And when I moved to Houston, we were weirdly in the same punk gothy social circle, right? Mm -hmm. So here we have this very famous cinnamon. And I'm not used to having, I'm going to continue with my orange. Um, People with the same name as me, that wasn't like a right. common problem I had growing up. Nobody, there weren't like Cinnamon A, Cinnamon H <laughs> <laughs> in the roll call. It was just me. And so people would assume when they would be like, what's your name? Yeah. That I was that Cinnamon. You were the but, same. Yeah, but we were not. Okay, like frankly, I thought she was much cooler than I was. And <laughs> just was. But people will be like, are you that cinnamon? And I'd be like, I'm not that cinnamon. And you could just see them looking at me with such profound disappointment. Mm. Oh, it was a weird time. But that is my weird one degree of separation from the Sandman. Anyways. Mr. Sandman. Because of all that, I read the comic, you know, as you would. Bring you get a sense of what was going on. Comic book. It's... Now I'm in a group with like 400 cinnamons on Facebook. So because somebody was like, what's it like to grow up being cinnamon? I'm going to make a documentary about it. And I don't know if the documentary is being made, but the group is pretty cool. <laughs> so you can see that these brush strokes go up and then across. And it's that balance between the up and across that's going to help us start to create that sense of something being a waterway. And look at that already starting to look like a waterway. Yeah. Really is. The other thing that we can do, well, no, let's call this a step because that was a pretty complete idea. That was a pretty complete pretty idea. Pretty complete idea. And you heard a story from my past. So that's, if you were looking, I, I if you're looking for quiet painting, keep watching the channel, hit that subscribe button because there will be some time lapses with piano in the future, something of like, so you can preview uh, upcoming paintings. We're talking about doing that because the algorithm seems to love it. And so, but I thought maybe it's also nice to have some of that. Um, but if you see those, there will be a full lesson available to you. Um, I think that's really the only answer for that is that you've got to have both. You've got to have the short and the full. Um, and I think it might be interesting. I might take the shorter ones, like take them to the five, six, seven hour space and then yeah. do the live ones. A little shorter. I don't know. I have made up my mind. Tell me in the comments what you think. What, what you think. What, what do you think? think? I think it's a step is what I think. I think it's a step. Step five. All right. What are we doing in step five? Sipping my coffee. Don't rush me. I'm not rushing you. Just saying. <laughs> what are we doing? I run away. All right. <laughs> so today we'll be touring Simmons painting because I don't know what else we could do. <laughs> I will drink some coffee. Coffee. So this 
this is looking pretty good, but I've got some distant background I got to think about a little bit. Some distant background? Some distance. So I'm going to take a little of my purple, some white. Come back here to these far away hills. I'm going to tap up and down. Wow, I'm just still using this $3 brush. Oh, my kingdom for a $3 brush. Maybe come back here with a little bit of this as well. I don't want too much water in it, but I do want to capture some of the cool. Oh, these are all so far away. So far away, my friend. So far Very away. Very far away. Coming back here a little bit, little bit, little bit. And then maybe some ultramarine. Kind of making little rough brush strokes because I want it to look like different distant leaf fall. Huh. You want it to have some distant leaf fall to it, right? Well, distant leaf fall, and I'm going to come forward a, a sum and add a little bit of definition and thought to my bank. So let's get a little bit of our... Oh gosh, I love our purple and red. Yeah? Yeah, I do. Same cheap brush. I don't know what's going on with me in this cheap brush today. But it's what's happening. It's doing it. You know what it is? And so I'm like... Don't rock the Sherpa boat. Don't rock the boat. I'll probably switch soon. A little purple and a little red. Kind of start the, the basis of maybe some of that fall drama. Little fall drama. Mm -hmm. and it's a rough background, right? Because, you know, it's leaf fall. Up front here, it might be a little more in the purple than the red. And then towards the back, it'll be a little more red than the purple. Mm -hmm. And we'll be working some shadows and things. Like right along this edge. And more into the red. It's rough because the ground will be rough. Building up. And you can kind of see it starting to come into its own. Linda would like to ask. Hi, Linda. How do you keep adding the layers without the paint becoming sticky? Um, my layer underneath is dry. It's fully oh. cured and it's dry. Now, if you're having trouble with your layers doing that, your paint is not binding. Mm. Um, you're either not drying it thoroughly enough. There can be actually, believe it or not, a problem with the paint. Some paints just do not like to bind. Yeah. Um, and you really have to allow them to dry between layers. Um, sometimes you're adding too much water and there's too much humidity in your air, you know? Yep. And if you're finding that those are your things, you know, first, first fix is give, give it time. Give some time to the moment. Can you improve your result by increasing the time with which you're allowing the paint to uh, dry and resolve? If time, I'm going to continue to get into the purple. If time is not giving that to you, then um, see if you have any other paints and are they giving you that same problem? Because sometimes it's our brand. Sometimes it's a batch. A little bit of the 
Uh, red and yellow. I'm going to come here and... Start to think about my little bank. Isn't that nice? Now, will you think you'll be doing any more bird hop things? Uh, yeah, my mom's on vacation, um, and so there won't be anything until she gets back, but we're definitely doing another bird hop. Yeah. We really enjoy them. If you guys enjoy them, we actually, she and I enjoy them. And we have to do some, like, we have some weird birds to do. <laughs> some weird birds, it's true. Maybe some holiday birds. So I'm just trying to make sure that my embankment is coming around here and curving back. And notice that I'll try to keep the edge of my embankment not completely smooth, right? Mm -hmm. Because, you know, river edges, they tend to have a little bit of a uneven, rough personality to them. I'm just making sure that this is nice and, and rich and fully coated for the fall. Let us go. Looking pretty good. Mm -hmm. All right. So I can change a brush right now and I can go into any of my hogs and I can go into a fan and I think I'm going to go into a big hog fan. Big hog fan. Yeah. Oh, okay. This is one that you guys can get almost anywhere. This is a six Simply Simmons. You can also still, I think, get my Art Sherpa fan brush. I would get the bigger size, the six. Notice that these are both sixes, which is what I mean. It doesn't matter the brush size, only in the line does it matter. Right. That's all that matters. Let's start making some leaves that are a little more personality. Okay. So I'm going to take a little bit of my red and yellow and get some orange, and I'm going to start to come through here and... Using my fan brush, create kind of some rough some rough landscape. Use this to sort of imply fallen leaves. Fallen mm -hmm. leaves give us a, uh, a kind of a patterned, nothing really stands out distinctly you know they they're like little pixels yeah so you know be rough with your brush don't you get rough with me i'm not trying to create little fan marks right where we see the shape of the fan i'm trying to use the fan's nature to create a rough earth is there an additive that makes it stick? No. No. I mean, in when they make the paint, there is in but the nothing, polymer. Nothing um, if you're really having trouble, you can always try to add more medium to it. Um, one of the things I would suggest, right, is if you're having that much trouble making your paint stick, mm -hmm. take pictures right the manufacturer. Paint Acrylic paint sticks. If it's not... There's something else afoot. Yes, you can get mediums and, you know, change the viscosity and everything in your paint. But craft bottle to fine art paint, its job is to stick to the canvas. Yeah. If it's not doing that, it's kind of failing at a basic job it's supposed to have. Maybe come down here a little bit. A little bit of light there, right? And that's just, that is just something like, if it's giving you that kind of grief, somebody needs to answer for that. Mm -hmm. And you can always take pictures and share it in our Facebook group and, you know, take a video. This is what's happening. This is how it's lifting. A lot of times there's some weird thing going on in your workspace that you're just new and you might not know about that we'll see. Even if, 
it, it could be like even a member of the group will see it. Because we've had people who've done all like 1,500 paintings practically with us. Mm-hmm. So at this point, they kind of know what the deal is. You know, it's a very helpful space. Trying to just make sure it's a rough space back here. A little purple, a little brown. A little darker back in this part of there. I haven't rinsed my brush, just going more into the red. I haven't rinsed my brush, just going more into the yellow. Pull that down, see how that gives it sort of a an embankment. Now, if you start working bigger, does uh, do you, do you do you have to worry about your paint drying out on you? Um, yeah, yeah. You'll definitely, as you work bigger, you may find that sometimes your paint is drying faster than you're working. Yeah. You may need to add a humidifier to your space. You may need to get golden uh, uh, glazing medium. This golden glazing liquid, which slows down the drying time of your paint. It's a slow drying extender for acrylic colors, and that might help you. You know, what I want you guys to realize, it doesn't matter what you guys have going on. There is a solution to it. I've never really seen anything in painting that there wasn't some sort of answer or solution. Except perhaps a misvarnish. Sometimes you can get into a pretty bad corner with a varnish. Mm. I'm just enjoying the, the layers. I've got more to go. But, you know, about sometimes with this stuff, it's just about, you know, getting it there. I'm going to dry this thoroughly because I'm going to want to put in um, my big trunk going across. Mm -hmm. And we'll talk a little bit about that. So I'm going to dry that and sip okay. some coffee. So while she's, yeah, while she's drying that, um, I will tell you guys, uh, don't forget, check in the link in the description down below because that's where you're going to find stuff about uh, the grid. See, look, there's a grid. She made one. And if you go over and check out on our website, you can find that or look in the link in the description down below and you'll see uh, a link to those places. You can find out about the Art Sherpa patronage, which is uh, available at theartsherpa.com forward slash patron. And thank you to everyone who is supporting us here on Super Chat and Emoji Club and the stars on Facebook. We really, really appreciate it. You guys, you make it possible for us to do this, for us to keep our show going. And, uh, man, just can't, can't thank you enough. What I will do is I'll take this sneak peek. Doo -doo -doo. Look at that. That's the old grist mill up there. I'll see if we can go back down and take a look at it from another angle. There you are. Where I go, here I am. All right. So I'll let you get a picture of that. I'll sip my coffee. Okay, hold on. Woohoo. Look at us go. We've got some hills. We've got some distance. Everything is super ornamental. If you're having a really hard time getting bright colors and you're painting with hues and not real pigments, that can be um, where the issue is. You can, if you don't like cadmiums, you can do pyrroles. You can use quinacridones, which are very vibrant. Um, another thing that you can do is if you're not getting great oranges, you can buy a pyrrole orange or a pyrrole red, right? Um, like I'm doing a limited palette all year, so you guys can collect together a basic level of paint that you might want to have in your own life. But um, you can buy beyond me. <laughs> you can. Definitely, and I recommend it because if you were to get a pyro orange into this or cad red light, that might create a significant amount of vibrancy. Are you all done with your I think so. If you see it here, you can paint it on the channel somewhere. I think there's one in here that's a patron, the kitty's patron. 
But everything here is something you could paint. You know what I think it is? Hmm. It's step time. It's step time. Am I on the right step? All right. Let's look at this. Wait. Hold on. That one. Yeah. Yay. Six. I don't know why it didn't sound very gay, did it? I had the wrong step showing. So I had All to right. <laughs> so we've got this interesting kind of log, and, and let's come from the bottom. Oh, let's go over the other side. Maybe like, it's pretty thick. Trying to see how you're going right, to. From the bottom. Almost like a full handover. Let's start up here. And if this is the middle of the canvas, right, it's going to come through here. And then over and sort of out. Yeah. Right. Let's see where we got this. Let me pull this up. Now, I thought, you know, it might be kind of interesting to kind of create maybe a knot somewhere on this on this log to make it more fascinating. Maybe we could add one here. What would you think of that? Or would you want it? Well, no, I think in the in the center of the stream it'll be too much of an eyesore. We'll just do one low. Mm -hmm. Just to make this particular tree, this deadfall tree that's going across our surface, seem like he's a more interesting fellow. All right. You could just do it, you know, the regular way as well. I just want to know sort of where he is. Now, when I know where he is, that lets me put in a couple of other really pivotal trees. I've got a tree here on top of the top of the hill. It's going to be right there. And I'll start sketching it in in paint so you guys can see all of it happen. Let's get a big round brush so that you can see all of where the trees are going to go pretty quickly okay i'm going to go ahead and do most of these in black you could add a little brown to it but it's really going to mostly be in black i'm adding water to my paint so it flows off my brush when i'm doing a bigger uh this is a black pearl by silver brush number 12 so it's a nice big round The top of the tree here will be thinner than the base of the tree. So it's very important to remember that. You don't want to get thicker at the top and skinnier at the bottom. I'm adding that little knot now. I think that I like... Add a little knot, shall we? Mm -hmm. Trying to see where you're. There you go. Oh. Painting that in. You can kind of see that going in now, can't you? Yeah. And it had a little bit of a branch coming kind of off here there we go and he was an interesting fellow and he has some interesting friends i would like to say that coming from the top to about shall we plant him here mm -hmm. if you Let's must give ourselves a nice big tree I'm gonna have you step back here and show from uh from uh, from the from your main camera where the placement of that log is so that they can see it because it's kind of hard to see from the two angles how that was presented. Okay. So the placement. You want me to step back, back? Yeah, there, right okay. there, right there is just fine. Step, so step to your left. So behind, there you go, like that. See right. them, them that camera. So you want the corner, the the lower right corner, to begin your log. Right, come over about five inches, four inches to the right. You're going to end up here about 
my gosh, it's four fingers for me, three, four inches over here. Okay. This is going to be a little bit smaller. You're going to want to taper it down. I added kind of an implied um, little knot, and I can step back so John can get some better access. Now, I'm going to paint through this fellow. Yep. Um, and the reason I'm painting through the fellow is because uh, I, it doesn't matter really at the stage where we're laying in trees. Right. Where our big trees are going to be. Because they We've all a, need that deep shadowy background. So they can. They do anyway. So. They can intermingle their shadows. They can absolutely. And we'll pull the layers of them out as we paint them. Beware of those layers. We're going to pull them out. Yeah. That's a good looking tree. He's a nice, he's a nice, interesting little cat, and he's pretty big. I might pull my number four out just to have a little more control. I'm going to make sure that these are quite dark. Pull my number four out so I have a little more control, and then use this one when I need, need it. Now, far in the distance, I'm going to get a little brown and black again. Far in the distance is a tree growing a little bit more forward from his friends. A friendly tree. And I'll pull a little branch up there. Now I may come and kind of change the lighting. Of that tree a bit. Into some oranges and things. But right now I just need to know where it is. And it's closer. So I can really enjoy painting out some little branches, can't I? You can. I like doing this on the bigger canvas than the small canvas, to be really honest. I love how it looks. This tree's... Just so much easier. Make much more interesting little trees, too. Just loving the trees. This forest is amazing. Like to plant me some trees and just relax into it. Just lean into the trees. Leave into it. Don't leave. leave. Lean. Lean into the trees, because if you leave, then they'll be alone. They won't. They don't want to be alone. Huh. The size of that branch, I have to thicken up this tree. So if you over thicken a branch, what you've got to do is is a uh, Thicken up the base of the tree. I have a very, I have a question that I don't, you never, that you don't like, know the answer to? I don't even know what they're talking about. Okay. You ready? Mm hmm. Okay. So, Michael, could be, uh, I think it's Michael, um, is, uh, is cinnamon. I was wondering, does white graft work the same as regular graft? Uh, I don't know what you mean by graft. Okay, me either. I was like, Ooh, is that but like kind it, of that paper? That could be like the auto spell check, like grab something. So, maybe, maybe graphing kind of paper, do you mean that? Do you mean uh, transfer paper? Just a little more info and I gotcha. I know what an autograph is. Uh, putting a little closer tree here and, you know, maybe a little friend that could come up here. So 
So these are little fellows in the in the far off little forest. We're making yeah. them kind of thoughtful. We need a grip through here. Oh my goodness, do we? Oh. Hmm. White graphite pencil. Is what the same as white graphite pencil? Uh I was wondering, uh, my white graphite, graphite pencil, will it work the same as a regular graphite pencil? Uh, check to see if, it has, if it's an oil-based or chalk-based. Gotcha. Oh, for drawing and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, you probably should make sure that it's water-soluble because it, it, if not, it'll stick in weird ways. You can always test. That's the best way. It's just like break out an old... Or a piece of canvas or something. Well, it'll like say that. on there if it's grease or oil yeah. or wax. And that's what you wouldn't want to use. And you can weirdly have um, all of those formulations in your white. If it's a true graphite, it should be. But I have found, uh, and the reason I ask this question is I know I have purchased sets that were graphite and gotten the white pencil in it, assuming it would also be of similar formulation. Mm -hmm. And it was not. At all. Just going to just sort of play with and enjoy my branches here, as you do. That's fun. Yeah, it is. Oh, those trees. Reminds me of camping. Isn't it? Yeah. Actually, this reminds me a bit of when I was wa walking with Claude. Uh, in, in France? The south of France, yeah, down the yeah. rivers. That was a real blessing. Bless that psychic that convinced my mom we needed to go to France. Oh, anyone who <laughs> needs to go to France and you just need a photographer to just travel along with you, I'm happy to go back. <laughs> oh, it was really lovely. I'm going to bring this tree down below. Uh, it's going to be vanishing next to the tree. Next to the tree. Give it a hard edge. Just takes a minute to lay in and grow your forest, you know? Mm -hmm. Took this forest and God made me hundreds of years. So you don't give yourself Took a second. Took a little while. Give yourself a second, human, in your painting endeavor. Sometimes Very... I will loosely kind of dry brush in a tree and then paint it in cleaner as I go. Mary says that the sh your tutorial on trees really helped her get good at trunks and branches. Oh my gosh, thank you, Mary. I am so glad. I, I really love it and get super excited when I learn that something I did or said helped anybody. It's a, it is incredibly rewarding. Three hoot, anyone. Mm -hmm. So did anyone see the newsletter and decided to come today because they got the newsletter notification? Oh, yeah. That's a good question. If you had the newsletter, let us know. And if you didn't get the newsletter, you can sign up on our website. Just join our website, theartsherpa.com. And when you sign up, you're automatically, you're automatically going to get sent the newsletter. And if for whatever reason you're not getting the newsletter, send an email to support at theartsherpa.com and it probably is that uh, our email service it will if your if your email bounces more than like three times our system stops sending it to you and it does that so that we don't spam your account uh, now that doesn't mean that anything went wrong sometimes emails just bounce because of weird internet stuff we so, always have them bounce, like every time I send out a yeah. newsletter, there's usually about it's, 30 of them that bounce. Yeah, and it's that's just because servers are busy, servers are low, low, overloaded, so it's not a big deal. But, I'm always uh, shocked when people unsubscribe. I always want to be like, you know what, free art? Oh, hold on. 
You don't want the free art? You don't all want the free the, art all, all the weeks? The, all the free art? You don't want it anymore. Oh. <laughs> or maybe it's just me. But you know what I don't do? I don't email them and be like, why? I will let you unsubscribe in peace. But yeah, I'm but always like, why? <laughs> uh, John thinks it's super funny. Why did you leave? Did you did you did you not like what we're doing? Did we send you too much stuff? I'm gonna call up Cheryl and find out why she unsubscribed. I, we will I mean, not. It's a funny thing we think, but I promise you, we will not. <laughs> she won't. No, but she but does I am take curious. it personally. She does very much. Like every person who unsubscribes, she's like, "Why? What happened?" I. Do it's it's very like. Did you just not need any more art help? Did you? I hope you went on to become a beautiful painter. Oh my gosh, I'm so funny. Like, I can't even help that. Like, sometimes I'll put aside my stuff just to make sure I'm encouraging. Well, you are One person came on TikTok and had a very negative view of my painting. And they had, uh, and, and I want to say this to you. I don't know if you guys have ever heard this. And I'm sure none of you here would ever say this. They said my 10-year-old could do better than that. So here's my issue with the sentence, right? That they do not love my art. I'm going to. Put a tree right back here. Put a tree oh, back there. That is not a big deal, right? Okay. We don't all have to. Art is very subjective and everybody doesn't have to like what I'm doing and or every lesson. And that's not the big thing. I was really disturbed that they brought their 10 year old into it. And it wasn't my 10 year old is the most amazing painter and paints better than everybody here, which mm -hmm. I would have been like, good mama. Good job, mama. <laughs> that's right. But it was that I don't think very much of what you do and my 10 year old could do better. Like the 10 year old wasn't doing great, just better than this bad thing that the mom was seeing. And I just wanted to write all that down. But I did a different redirect where I was like, well, if you really are I'm like, I hope you're investing in your kid's talent. I'm so glad that you see that they're talented. Uh, you should send him to the school, this art school I sent my kids to. <laughs> I went the other way because you just never know. Like maybe the kid is super talented and this is their parent. <laughs> this Sh Cheryl says, this Cheryl will never unsubscribe. Thank you. It was not me. It was not me. I'm in for life. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Bless you. Thank you. And it's okay if you accidentally unsubscribe or intentionally because a thing that happens in your life, you're always welcome back. You're, you're allowed. You it's are just, allowed. Things happen in life. Maybe it's just like, you're like, I need a painting break. It's okay. You can come back later. We'll still be here. We painting will. away in the internet. We will. It's like somebody left us a VHF channel in their will, and they now can't take away our live broadcast. Though they want to. Like, so... I do want to be clear that because these are all black silhouettes, I'm not worried about the layering yet and where what breaks what where until I get all these trees in. Okay. And there's really nothing to do when you're putting in the trees, but putting in the trees. Huh. You just nothing really don't have do anything else trees. you can do but that. It just is what it is, my friends. Hmm. It is what it is. But this is probably, of the painting, if you can be easy with yourself, if you can be forgiving of, you know, perhaps uh, your self-criticism dialogue. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring some downward branches down. If you can be forgiving of those self-criticisms and just allow yourself to plant some trees and enjoy that process, you can really uh, get some serenity from planting trees, imaginary trees. The only way you'll mess that is up is if you start to get a dialogue of, you know, you suck, you're no good, your trees are terrible. You're really not allowed to do that, or that you not. <laughs> Be mean to yourself. That's right. Easy to fix when we're all in a retreat together. Hard when you're in the privacy of your own home. Oh, I can man. feel you, but I can't, I can't hear you. So I can't be like you. <laughs> I'm going to have to make a, 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 a ask to some of our patrons and fans soon. 
Hmm. We're gonna we're gonna have to ask. I need some letters that would say, "Hey, if we were gonna have an event coming up in different weird places around the country." Well, John's explaining this letter. I'm going to take my little purple and kind of line my stream. Keep 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 telling him. Would you come? And so we have we'll we'll, we'll have a. If you're interested in writing one of those little letters for us, we could really use the help. It has to do with like, you know, we're going to be doing some eventing and... Um, we're trying to get control over our event space. Yeah. And to demonstrate that, uh, they'd like to know if some folks would come in the future to an event that we might have, if we had a space that we could regularly place events at. And I was like, well, I don't know how to openly ask it because I mean, like if I just said... Go to such and such a place and tell them that you would like to go to see a Sherpa thing. They may not be prepared for that. <laughs> so if you send those to support at theartsherpa.com. If you're interested, yeah, send it, send, just drop a little support at theartsherpa.com and we'll, we'll give you the deets. And, it, you know, if we all pull this off together, we promise to make sure that we have at least like one free event a year. Oh my, at le least. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure... Based on some of the things that were... Probably based on Sasquatch. <laughs> There's definitely going to be some squatching. Maybe Lord of the Rings, which is why I took on that crazy painting in that first place. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say there is going to be a Dungeons and Dragons table in the middle of a uh, Shady Dragon Inn in not too long. Yeah. Yeah, but we got to get the letters in first. Got to get the letters. So we have big plans. <gasps> look at that. Let's look back and look at that. Look at that. Look at how our, our forest is coming together. Isn't it a lovely forest? It it's a lovely Isn't forest. I love this lovely? forest. There's so many more leaves to put in, but we've really got the good anymore. beginning. and We can start putting in that stream. Oh, no. Take a picture. I'll be back. So it's a big landscape with a lot of trees and a deep forest, but you can do this and you, and it doesn't have to be just, uh, you know what I mean? It can be gorgeous. You have that in you. But you've got to take the time and you've got to do the layers and you've got to breathe. So let's breathe. <sighs> Relax your shoulders and your jaw and your neck. Try not to carry too much tension in there. Try to be light and easy with yourself because that'll help you. It will help you. Do you know what? Else will help you. Coffee. Stepping. 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 Seven stepping. Well, if you must, while well, we're letting all this have kind of a dry, this let's get a fresh water cup. The most dangerous step. The most dangerous step? Mm -hmm. Why? Because seven, eight, nine. Oh, you're so bad. And so silly. Sometimes. And it never stops. When is it going to stop? Never. I don't know. <laughs> okay. I don't even know what we're talking about. So one of the first things that I am going to want to do is I'm going to take mm, a little of my black. And I'm going to make sure coming down my river. Oh, you're making reflections. We've got to reflect some of these trees. Hmm. So, do you ever get down into the southern Louisiana area for painting workshops? Uh, I have not, but I'm going to be real honest. I love Louisiana. Mm -hmm. uh. We have been to that part of the coast a lot. I very much enjoy. I very much enjoy New Orleans and uh, definitely always think about you guys during Shreveport. hurricane season and prayers in my heart that you guys are always okay. You see how we're pulling these little tree reflections down? Very important. Nice little. 
The dark lines are going to be as meaningful in your water as the reflections when we get them in. Those reflections are pretty fantastic. Where you put the reflections, you can just look at the trees that you planted. Putting them in. They are getting put in. Looking pretty good. Mm. How about Minnesota? I would go to Minnesota. I would. I love seeing you guys. North Carolina would like to have a, like, don't forget about us. <laughs> we are interested in coming to all of the places. All of the places. We are. One Europe, of the every place. I'm moving to a bigger brush just to make my trees a little easier to, uh, the, ref the, the depth reflections just a little easier to manage. I have to say, one of the things that we found troubling is every time we went someplace, um, the venue and staff were... Not always the what we wanted. Florida, San Diego, California, too. Of course. There's just no time that we're not going to be excited to see you guys. That's just not going to happen. What about Atlanta and Scotland and Hobbiton, too? <laughs> of course, of course, of course. And totally, of course, if you're going to say Scotland. Scotland needs. Call that a step because you guys kind of want to get it into there. Because once we put that in, when we add light and some color to the river and a few reflections. And all of a sudden, you've got a river, my friend. Lynn says Scotland needs the art Sherpa. Well, my good friend, Tanya, is in Scotland. That's Tartan Taz Creates. And she has a YouTube channel. Huh? I've, really? Woo! We have 300 people who came to pay live. Please don't go so I don't look like a fool celebrating 300. <laughs> like, hang for a minute. So, uh, yeah, it's a real good friend that she's over there, and I really want to visit her. And uh, it's hard for her to travel, so I would love to go over to Europe. I would love to go to Scotland. Um, love to go to Ireland. Like, have a whole thing in Ireland would be just a joy. Definitely would like to get back to France. Uh, dig Sweden. I dig Italy. Ciao. <laughs> I love Spain. Um, I'm just, I just love everything. I just love, I love all of it. It's just fun for me. I like people. People are, people can be amazing. Mm -hmm. People you can know, be the suck, but people can also be amazing. Elves and hobbits. I find very New nice. New Zealand. Go all there. You know, uh, Christy was Wait, saying. that hobbit painting like to just end me. I was just, John, we are yeah. going to be on for seven hours. Christy says you need to come stay at the Hobbit House in Southern Illinois, where it's near Pachuca, Kentucky art community. I don't know. Okay. Need a burrito. Send us information. Info us. Support at the .com. Info us. <laughs> Stepping. Stepping, stepping. All right. So in here, all this wonderful light that you see, we've really got to try to figure out how to get this in. And so I'm going to make sure I've got clean water. Clean enough, I think. And I'm going to get a um, maybe a smaller fan. You could use uh, the Art Sherpa fan or... Not a big fan. Or a hog fan, any one of these. This is a Silverstone fan, number two. And this is a Art Sherpa fan, number four. Again, same brush company. See how different the sizing is? It's not yeah. relative at all. I'm going to get this a little bit wet. Come in here and start to get some bright colors. I'll have to put my shadows back. The embankment. A little more orange. Teneve is like, hello from New Zealand. Hello, New Zealand. I would totally go to New Zealand. 
I'm not sure how to pronounce your last name. Agrawal? Can you go down? Do you see I'm starting to put in some of that more uh, bright reflection that's around? And some of our... I'll get into our brown over here. It's a little bit darker, right? It's okay to take it over the tree trunk and even a little bit up into the embankment because you're going to put that embankment back. Wow. Welcome all of our friends from all over the world. Whether you're coming here to America or you're someplace else. Welcome. Get a little white and yellow. We're going to start to work that right in this range where that reflection might be coming down. Greetings, all earthlings. There's so many here. So all, many earthlings. All over the earth. Yeah, well, it's what we got. It is. You know what I find most interesting about earthlings? What? They tend to like pictures of the earth. I like pictures of the earth. Especially paintings of them, like this one in the woods, where there's a tree falling down. This begs the question. If a tree falls in the woods and there's no earthling there to hear it. Are you really asking me if it makes a sound? Because you know how I feel about that question. No, but who's going to paint it? Oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, don't start with me. So you can see we're adding these bright colors, these wonderful little colors that we have here. I don't want to take the, the deep reflections away. Sometimes you got to bring it across. Hmm. Kind of exactly what we did before, right? Now I may have to put some of my trees back as I go if I lose them too much. Yes. Rinse out and get into a bright orange. And sometimes I will come back uh, and do an upward stroke to kind of blend in. This just takes a minute and you can go across. I'm going to get a little of my purple. It's got some brown in it. Come across. You can see my trees are still showing through. Do see the trees. When you come across like this, you're kind of like creating little water motion. And that's important. There's a lot to do. Yes, you're getting through it. To get this done. There's, you know. Cruising right on through. Yeah, when we call it a three hoot, <laughs> pay attention. Things are happening. Hmm. Oh, so They're Dory was yellow and white right here. What was funny. wondering? What does it mean when someone's supporting with stars? Oh, what that means is Facebook has this thing because they, they uh, uh, want to have a way for creators to get support from uh, fans and patrons. So they created this star thing. Every star is like a penny. 
Um, if you're unable to do it, they'll be like next to all the, I, the emojis and chat message all in that window. There'll be a little dollar thing and it will let you send it. It goes through Facebook. Facebook is sending that to creators. I don't even think they're deducting from it yet. <laughs> and um, so it's just a way to support creators and you know, like a hundred stars is like a dollar. So, you know, it's fun to do. And sometimes if you guys are sending a lot of stars, it pushes that video out to more people because Facebook is like, ha, ha, ha. They must I don't know. But I really appreciate it very much, and it does go to us, and it helps fund Cables and Lights and all the weird oh, remodeling the that we're always doing in the studio. So, so many cables. Come in here with a little more white and yellow. Now, if you paint out a tree that you're going to have to put back, that's okay. Sometimes. Right, guys, that is okay. Because, guess what? Mm. You have the paint. You have the power. And we're going to be at this river painting for a second, so you might as well buck, you know, settle in, John. Settle uh, in. I'm here. <laughs> no, I'm just warning you. <laughs> I have the camera remote. I like to mess with John quite a lot. It gives me super joy. Well, I, I kind of know how far along in a painting we are now. Yeah, it's, you know, when I think about how, like, John always has supported my artwork. Always, always, always. Always, like, since since we were dating, like, I, I did a portrait of his sister, and uh, he framed it. It was just like, um, like, he always framed artwork that I gave him, or when, I don't know. Always been super supportive, but he hasn't necessarily been process oh i'm a babe i'm gonna need a this plugged in uh oh process oriented Whoa. and um gonna just keep painting that in sometimes i'll get into my red and my docks purple for some dark reflections as you do like i do maybe but now that he's had to sit here with me all these years between editing and um, actual live streams, Don actually probably knows as much about painting as I do. I don't know, man. You've heard all the explanations. I think he knows more than he lets on. Thank you. Yeah, I'll have to flip it around. You just do that and I'll, I'll well, or not. <laughs> we'll see if it'll still go. It doesn't recognize my face upside down. Surprise, surprise, surprise. For those of you who remember Gover Pile. <laughs> All right. So here we are. I'm going to stand back and look at this for just a second as we're pulling in. And you can see as, as we start to add these details, the stream starts to happen for us, doesn't it? as we start to think about how the stream comes in and are you going to make another cup? Is that what you were thinking? I was going to microwave yours, but I realized that can't happen. No, no. And it doesn't need it because I'm in the cup mom sent me. Oh, that's good. I'm just also making sure that these nice reflections are. Just like everything else. Oh my goodness, this is a landscape painting. Do you feel it? Really it really is. I see how beautiful it is. Not one hoot though. No, but that <laughs> stream's really coming together though. You just got to be in it. Got to be in it to win it, my friends. To see the stream. This really is beautiful. 
I'm just trying to make sure that these these little moments in the water are not you know too stable as you would want, want them to be. <laughs> you know, it's always funny. There's a, there's a group of ladies who are fan of the kilt. <laughs> there really is. And so every <laughs> once in a while I look over there and chat and I'm like, whoa, can, oh, okay. You're talking about kilts. That's okay. <laughs> you know. There's groups for that. There's 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 a group for that. There's a group for everything. But there's especially a group there, for there's that. A, there's a special group for that. That's true. There's a special. I'm going to get some clean water again, and John will have to get me some freshens after this. I'll work on that. Right. So we're going to continue to want to add these wonderful reflections. And now I'm going to put out that phthalo blue that I mentioned earlier. The phthalo is in the reflection somewhat, and so I want that there. And we're going to start to uh, add some of the drama oh, right. that I'm wanting to do. So the first one I'm going to do is I'm going to get a little of my blue onto my fan brush and quite a lot of my white. And we're going to make that sky color. Do you remember the sky color? Yeah. We're going to start adding some sky to our stream. Now, if... Right here. Uh, Come across and add some sky to your stream. So Tanavi asks a really good question. Because this is like, do you have to paint this all in one go? Oh, no, I do. <laughs> Why do you? Why Be is that? <laughs> because, uh, so when we do them in segments, YouTube doesn't serve them out very well. Because we're live. You have to do it all at once. There's no faking it. Because we have to do it all at once. But, you know, it's a lot that it's just that's what the platform requires in this thing. But you can pause me and go take a break. By all means, I am not in any way insulted by that. Mm -hmm. And anyway. it's good. That's why we put the steps in there so that you can take a break after a little bit and then come back. Just putting that little sky reflection in there. I don't think I wanted to take out that. Yeah? No. Over here, I might be a little more deep blue. Again, if I paint out anything that I want to put back, I just put it back. I don't, I don't in any way stress over that. Take a little bit of my purple on phthalo blue together. We'll work this over here quite dark. I'm going to add some little ripple reflections. I know exactly what you're thinking, and I agree. I'm adding some little deep, deep little shadows here of ripples in the water. All right, little ripples. And we're going to add some uh, deep blue little ripples right here as well. So they can't hear me whisper because I turned my mic off. They still can hear you whisper because your mic is on. <laughs> so there's no amount of, you can't hear me when I whisper. It's I'm the, not even that. Look, dude, you I think got I'm a like concerned? On my face. It's <laughs> gonna hear everything I say, but you can't hear me. Come here, and I'm gonna add a little bit of this kind of blue along the shoreline here. Yes. Into the into this. This is an interesting little blue. We're gonna bring back. I like it very much.
Like it very, very much. I'm gonna rinse that out. Now, add some shadows and some. Is this a beginner painting? No. Well, in that every step of it is explained, it is a beginner painting. So it's it but it's on... a more advanced beginner painting. So you want to have some basic art skills. Right. to really take this on just so that you're not struggling on the terms and concepts that we're using. So it's so like it's not like your first beginner painting, but maybe like if you're like on your 10th to 20th maybe. Yeah, you'd be ready to take it on. We we rate these by hoots and the hoots kind of give you an idea of what difficulty you're in. <laughs> all right there we go yep just getting through this it takes a minute to get it right yes. and you've just got to do what you've got to do while you're getting it back into my kind of yellow Maybe some little brown here Back and forth. I don't want to take out the shadows, right? I'm just adding some little water effects. Cats and husbands snoring on the sofa next to partners. They happen? They're happening now. Oh, I, I feel you. My husband snores next to me all the time. <laughs> ah, just a, it's just the truth. <laughs> so I'm just going to go back and forth. Sometimes I pull down. You see I'm wiggling back and forth. I'm pulling mm -hmm. down. I see. And this just kind of shows the different little spaces of the water. <laughs> painting in the dark, saying, I finally get over my fear of owls by painting, but then I heard a hoot. See, I would think that if you're painting in the dark, you should be very comfortable with owls. <laughs> or maybe, is it, or, and bats, they often come out at night. I feel like, I feel like these Bring are, some of these colors in. And every once in a while, don't forget to bring them down. You want to bring them down. But we welcome you here painting in the dark. Yeah, you are loved. Thank you. Just working this out. It's looking great. It's getting there. So I'm going to go back into my blue and purple. Nothing to do but do the work. Do the work. Paint the ripples on the stream. I'm taking a little bit of my purple and blue along here. It's very per blue. Holy. Taking a little bit back there. Just with my little fan brush. Just making sure we have that busy, busy reflection. Super. Have we photographed yet? Other this part of the stream? Uh, not this part of the stream. We're about ready to. I think we are. 
Yeah. We're about ready to photograph this part of the stream. I think this is. And a good now we've place. got to start putting some like highlights and in detailed little reflections and little shapes and everything in there that are very All very right, specific. Buddy. But for this, I think we're getting there good. So. Water reflections give us a lot of opportunity to really play and to be playful. And I like them very much for that. I'm going to pull this aside and get fresh water. Um, if you have trouble, just let it dry and then just come back and try to pay attention to are your lines horizontal and are they vertical and how they're wandering. Because every line in the water tells you its direction of flow. So if you have very flat water, you're going to have very distinctive lines that go across it, even if it's flowing kind of forward. If everything is just sort of like not cascading down rocks or not moving in an unexpected way, you know, you've got some very great predictable stuff that you can do. I'm going to sip my coffee. You can sip there while we step. Step it up, baby. Step to the nine. So I'm going to take something. This is called a grass comb. Gilbert Grass Comb. Another brush that you could use in the same kind of make is called a grainer. I'm going to use the comb in this just because it's bigger. All right. So all that's happening here is this is bigger. And I'm going to make sure. I have a little bit of a reflection. From this little sunlight. It's happening here. And get a little yellow. I'm gonna make little kind of ripples back and forth. If you guys can see these. Yes, rippling it back and forth. Mm -hmm. Hopefully what we're starting to see, and I'm going to step back, make sure what I'm seeing is what I'm wanting to see, is the beginnings of some really lovely, I think it's looking lovely, lovely, lovely little reflections. Just get into some light yellows here. And come between the trees and just paint some light dancing in there. Little, yeah, it is exactly that light dancing. It's also just as important, you know, that we have shadow dancing. Mm -hmm. So I may come back with my. Uh, you know, some red and purple and
highlight these trees. Maybe a little white into it. Oh, and I have to say big love to everybody out there. Big art hugs. We really appreciate you. It's just just can't say how much we love the support and the you know, everyone being here with us. Super nice. Making sure that our little lights are a shining. If you overlight something, you can always come back. And mute it. And mute it. You really can. You know, I can always come in and like, oh. Now it's interesting is because the angle of the uh the the tree is it won't really cast a reflection. No, and if it does it's way over. It'd be real it'd be casting towards you so much yeah. more. So yeah. That that's the thing that is surprising and that's why sometimes references can be helpful. Being able to really kind of catch that I'm going to come through here and I've got white. I'm going to make sure my paint is fairly fluid. And uh, maybe there's a little blue on it, just a little phthalo blue. Tap along the little distance shoreline, right? Tapping along that distant little shore and then coming along here. There it is. So neat, those reflections. They are fun. Okay, so Terry, has got a good question here. Um, Came along here. And see, I see two fan brushes on her tray, a hog hair and a Simply Sims number six. I'm trying to buy brushes, and I'm wondering if the Simply Sims number six is worth paying more for. Uh, it should be less to pay for a Simply Sims number six. Hmm. So I wouldn't gr downgrade from this. Here, I wouldn't go any lower. Then this you should be able to find for three dollars. So yeah, it's more in there. Yeah. So I think probably you've got another brush that you're thinking. And check the brush guys. You guys yeah. use the art, the the art Sherpa as a code there, and you'll get like. Though discounts. you know what, with inflation, man, who knows what anything's going to cost true. anymore. But I, I'm pretty sure that you'll find good. You'll find those brushes there over there. I'm just going to make sure that there's a nice little 
Our reflections are happening here. It kind of like we're from the sky, right? Definitely. Kind of like how the sky can maybe shine through and So where you've got this like kind of light white and blue, what you're doing is you're painting, you're painting the trees that are up above you. Mm. Now I'm going to put out some fluid white and that's just because I, my other white's been sitting in on my palette and is a little thick and it'll be hard to thin and I am going to mist it. And we're going to put some bright reflections on this. Kind of like that bright spot of sunlight, right? Yeah. Adding the reflections of the water, the surface. Mm hmm. Surface reflections. Little surface reflections of water and movement. Mm hmm. I'm just painting kind of loosely. A little bit of water and movement. Little bit of water and movement. Yeah. Now I'm going to stand back and just make sure I'm not doing too much. No, it's looking really nice. Right? Because we just want to see the river, feel the river, be the river. All right. Uh, the river looks pretty fantastic there. The river is not bad. Stream, river, creek. Not sure. It's a flowing thing of water. Yeah, I'd say it's probably creek to stream. Wix is back. <laughs> yeah, she was just over here saying, yeah. I'm alone. All right. Come here, you. Mm. We're going to get a picture of this, and then we'll continue on to finish the painting. We're kind of in the downhill stretch now. Um, really, the things that we have left to do are the trees and the details out in the, in the forest and kind of pulling the whole landscape together. It's just really important to enjoy the process and enjoy the color mixing and Remember why you sat down to paint in the first place, which was probably to have a good time. And relax and be calm and take a deep breath. 
and just enjoy the world. How are you doing today? Mm, such a sweet thing. You're so sweet. You're such a sweet girl. <sighs> All right. But yet, more tree, more leave, more tree. <laughs> so there's a lot still left to do. A lot yeah. still left to do. So I'm going to, I think I'm going to take a little bit of my, I'll take Hold my. On. You, you, you forgot something. What? To step everyone. Step, step. Got to give them the step. Mm-hmm. Now Step you it can up. go on. Thank you. I'm going to take a little of my blue. Up over here. I'm going to come here and sort of kiss the front of this little tree. Maybe it's little friend. Little blue and white. I have an unexpected way to do this, but it's really dramatic and I like it. I like it very much. Here, really in the forest. Gonna have to put that tree branch in front again. It's true, I'm going to be here with some moss, but I'm definitely going to highlight the front of that. Yeah. And this is just the two blues and a little white. Maybe a little more white. Try to think about the way that the bark is, you know, the way it is in the tree. Mm -hmm. Also here, I'm going to uh, put a little blue out here. Maybe a bit of distant. A blue in the background. Get a little of my you know, leaf color and kind of maybe even get a little purple into it and then come back here and put some little fallen leaves down. I'm just wiggling my brush back and forth. Letting the distant forest kind of recede, really. Mm. I'm going to brush this back. Get a little more purple on there. Brush this back. This bank kind of curves down here, doesn't it?
Maybe this part of it's a little more in shadow. Maybe a little purple shadow coming forward on those little trees, right? A little bit. And I'm come forward with maybe a little more yellow here. Really kind of grays with the purple, but that's okay because this is far away. Maybe a little more extreme of the light coming through, but we're going to just talk a little bit about that light coming through. Mm. I know you too. Little dark shadow. Hmm? I just uh, pushed the wrong button there. Every once in a while, I still getting used to the new setup here. A little purple coming back. We're just going to be here a second painting leaves, guys. And that's okay. And that's okay. Just bringing that dark value back at the banks. This is the banks want to have a deep shadow, and we can use the purple for that shadow. It's a good place to use our purple for a shadow. On top of that, you can kind of think about how maybe some of this is a little bit darker. And I'll come through with my purple. Could be a little bit darker. And I'm gonna come forward a little bit with my shadow under here. Because both, you know, we've got this this tree, which is at a weird angle. We wouldn't really see its shadow, but we would see this tree's shadow. And then coming down and making that be darker. Maybe a little light cuts through there, right? Mm. Turning out really cool. Just getting a little, little hillside. Just getting a little hillside. So you can cover it with leaves. We can cover it with leaves, but we're getting that basic sense of value, right? Mm -hmm. It's very, it's, it's, it's very valuey. I'm just wiggling this filbert. This is a this is that one we used earlier, the number eight. Look at us taking that number eight filbert and just playing with this. We're not not all worried. Maybe you are worried, but you shouldn't be worried. Because there's no need to worry. Mm -hmm. None at all. Everything is just fine. You're going to find that when we start to pull these trees back into their zones, it also helps the landscape come together. Like the moderators were saying, yeah, sometimes uh, I have a, I'll, I'll catch the questions in the live chat. Sometimes uh, I will be busy switching cameras and I can't always catch them. So 
our moderators will get will go there we go they'll catch them and put them in uh, a little chat window so I can see them but uh, I try to catch them you do yep so you can see when you want to put some an object in front of another object it's about breaking that space between those two objects mm. and pulling said object forward right I just darken this even so because it's just so important right here. Come in with a little bit more paint, make sure this is, you know, well covered. Looks good up close and far away. Mm hmm. What we're doing right making sure it looks good up close and far away here we go making sure we got some distant shadows on those hills do you have some distant shadows on your hills hopefully you do I can always add some more highlights to my shore edge. Adding some blue to again shade the bank. Mm -hmm. That shady bank. Maybe shading over here to the side. I'm just showing some of that. All right, and there's kind of a little pocket of light that's hitting here. And that is doing quite well. Yeah. I will go back and take a second and add back my reflections. A little brighter. As we lost him a titch. Hmm. Little highlight there along the shoreline. Yeah, just highlight along the shore. You you won't mind it. And while I'm here, I'm gonna take my little fan brush, and we're gonna mix some brighter oranges, some brighter colors. Let's plant some fall leaves. Maybe there's a little, oh, I want it to be darker. Random little fall bush. Something. Push up on that and be kind of weird with that. But I do want that to be in a darker, darker color. And we'll make sure that even along the bank, right, our fall leaves are there. We're just taking this and allowing the brush to be the hot mess that it is. Mm. And therefore getting the nice texture that we want from our leaves. Oh, Lynn thinks you need fresh coffee. I probably do need fresh coffee, but I don't know where my son went. I'll go I'll go investigate the coffee here momentarily. <laughs> I know, Lynn. I'm being just a little contemplative and painting. Hopefully you guys are too. Um, as we go along. It's a big project. This is a big landscape to do in a sitting. You know, on a live, but I don't mind. I'm kinda happy to get to do it today. We have a light little uh, fun uh, spooky painting tomorrow. I'm just brushing this. See how this paint just is all on this hot mess brush and that hot mess allows me to succeed, allows you to succeed at what we're doing. I do. Okay. 
I'm just making sure that I have little leaves. A little purple and red for those dis distant fellows. Right? Yeah. That maybe what's along the bank. It's there. It's fall. We see it. This is a really pretty painting. Oh, we're doing so good. All right. Really Let's just call good. this a step and we okay. will move on and start putting in some foliage that explains that forest floor. All right? Because now we got to put in some foliage that's going to explain our forest floor. We've got to start putting in some of that green against the orange, which feels so fall, that moss on the tree, which is just so gorgeous and we don't paint enough. And I think by spring, we're going to be painting that deep, lush, primordial green forest with bright contrast i think you guys are going to be ready for it you just keep doing these with me and you will be there big paintings big landscapes big results right that's what it's about all right so we have um some primordial kind of forest stuff and i think i will go ahead and i will do my grass comb to do it Okay, and I'm going to take burnt sienna and phthalo green and a smidge of cad yellow. And I'm going to start to add some moss. Kind of little. Burnt sienna. Phthalo green, cad yellow. Uh, again, and I could ease my work to make this a very uh, pop painting using pyro orange, using uh, very light yellows. There's a lot I can do, but, you know, I think that we're going to find ourselves uh, with limited supplies of things and limited budgets. So I think having a set palette that we invest in is a good idea right now. Continue to be into that dark green. Okay, there you go. And then we're going to put some of this here. Perfect, John. John is just perfect. So we're going to add some of this down here. We're just coming here. And you can see I'm just tapping this over. And the brush, the comb, which remember you can do as grainer. You could do a fan. Dude, you can do a sponge. There's a lot of things that will make these sort of stippled, irregular pattern. You could take a pair of scissors to a brush and get here. So just know that you can and that you're okay if you need to. And this green's going to go all the way up this tree. Maybe even get a little deeper green into it, more thalo into that green. And tap that in, more thalo. And work that through. This is really going to be about when we come through and add those. I'll come on this side and brush it sort of down. And then we add those highlights to the moss, right? You can come back and kind of like make sure that we've got a deep, deep moss. And then even, uh, let's... Uh, do the one next to it. This has started to grow up. It's, I think it's like a parasite. Maybe it's a symbiote, but I suspect a lot of times things that grow on trees are, are really parasites. Maybe there a little bit, right? And come in and get a little of your yellow. 
into your green here. Even more yellow. It needs to be quite light. Add a little white to it. You want contrast. That's how we're really going to see it, right? Tap down and... That green there, that highlighted green. Tapping up and down with your brush. You're just going to tap up and down with your brush. You're going to just breathe in, tapping up and down, out. And silence that inner critic. Oh, I love you. Okay, but I love you. <laughs> I love you, bringer of coffee. Okay. Okay. Ooh. Mm. Ideal. You could just leave me alone with them like this for hours. Honestly, you could. Look at that little forest and its moss. Let's paint some of that green moss, shall we? A little white. Even lighten our green some more. Let the moss catch the highlight in the sun. If I want to go back, because I get a little crazy with that, I'll just come back with some dark green and want to break that back up. Not stuck. Maybe a little lighter up here because the trees and the shadows. Maybe a little lighter. Rinse out. Maybe I want to get a little my yellow a smidge of my green oh that's quite bright and some white a couple places so maybe super bright highlights here and maybe a little yellow and white and come along this little tree here and talk a little bit about a highlight Look at those little highlights. Pretty special. I like it so much. Get a little bit of my purple and red. Come in here on the inside of this little tree. A little bit right there. Kind of warm it up. Maybe even warm this one up right here. A little purple and red. Just to talk about them being in some sunlight. Because they are. Even though they're silhouetted. They have light on them. 
Okay. We're doing good, John. Yeah. Let's uh, add a little highlight to this little bush that happened. You want to make sure that's cheerful? I know I does you. I loves you. I loves you. You can count on it. Maybe just dance some light leaves. Your faces. Because it's fine. Because I can. You, come here. Shall we yeah. take a picture, sir? Yeah. Let's see here. Take a little picture. Drink. Oh, I love my moss. Look at that. Do you love your little mossy trees? Off in the distance, we're all ready for some foliage now. And Twix is ready for some patty pets. And I'm ready for some sippy sips. Love you. So, how are you guys liking Big Landscape Class? We're showing up for you enjoying yourselves. Can't wait to see your versions of this painting. Um, I'd like to get where we did the, like, where we're doing, like, really in-depth landscape classes on here. I think it'd be really fun for all of us. With some occasional one-hoop breaks, right, for enjoyable good times. Looking good, looking good, looking good. Now, what? I'm Don't just talking. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna. Away. I'm not gonna step away. I'm gonna step. Okay. Mm. All right. We have foliage, some fall leaves that are kind of in through this area. that are a little more, you know, noticeable and, and kind of going on. And so, lots of ways we can put those in. But I say we just go back into our crazy brush. Right, we have these two crazy brushes. Let's use these two crazy brushes. They make nice foliage. So I'm going to come here on this one from the line, the DIY Art Minds Home 3 8 inch, just smaller. I'm going to make some docks purple and some cad red. And I'm going to make more thoughtful foliage. I love that foliage. A little thoughtful, a little considered. These trees back here. I don't want to take away. You know what happens when your when your leaves get a little out of control? They get a little unruly. Uh -uh. They become shrubbery. <laughs> well, we're gonna shrub it right up, right? We could do this with a sponge. We could do this. With a small brush, a little uh, brush stroke at a time, and any of that is fine. I'm going to add just a smidge of water. Shrubbery is neither a tree nor a bush. It is an obstinate creature. Caught between the middle ground. I think it's important to, you know, kind of think in the same way you do with, as you would with clouds. Yeah. Sometimes with this type of uh, tree space. These are a little further away, but we still want them to have their moments. Yeah. And we can come in and, you know, if you get a little more red, put it on the underside here towards the sun, the red going in. Isn't that fun? Maybe something comes in front of these two trees. Branch of something and the top here. Heather was just asking, what's the record number of steps? I don't know. 15, 16? We made it into the 20s, I think, once. And the reason why I say that is, is that I have the step chart over here. And right now it only goes up to 25. So... <laughs> And I had to expand it beyond 16 or 17 one time, and I had to do it live. So I was like, shh, shh, shh. I'd like tw I'd, I think we want to say we want to go into the 20 somethings. Yeah. But we've never been past 25 for sure. Add some of that to the ground, right? Where the trees are. Their leaves are like that. The ground leaves will be kind of like that too. I'm going to stand back and kind of look at that. How are our distance, right? How's yeah. our distant look? Looking pretty good, I think. Looking pretty good. I'm going to rinse out, get fresh water. 
And the reason I change my water as often as I do is because I want my colors to stay bright. Right. It's easy for this palette to go dull. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. And so I want to make sure that I've got some trees here. Like this tree is going to have some nice foliage and I want some foliage up here. And so, you know, and maybe some low bushes down here. So let's start with some low bushes down here. I'm going to take my yellow into just a little bit of red. Bring that forward just a bit. And then uh, also here. I'm not going to paint out every twig. It's nice sometimes in the fall when the twigs kind of stick out, right? So we'll let that be yeah. there. Drying so we can bring some bright foliage in. And let's do some orange foliage. So let's take some red. All right. And yellow. It's traditional. Traditional. Go up there and look at the traditional orange. Now I might have to paint this tree back in to make sure that this looks correct. Tapping this up and down. I'm going to tap this up and down. I got almost my, you know, pure cad red. Tapping that up and down. Just bringing these little forms. Really should pop over the green, but I don't want to paint out all the green. Do I? No. I'll wipe off a little bit and get into my yellow and red. This is really incredible. Just enjoy this. I'm going to stand back and see if I like how my leaves are laying in the forest. Do I enjoy where I'm placing, placing my leaves? Sometimes you get into a painting and it just... Sort of just happens, you know? Yeah. A little more into the yellow here. Now, would uh, the your stencil brushes work for this leafing technique? Um... <laughs> They do a really good impasto technique. Um, the stencils, the Air Trooper stencils are rough enough, but you might need to get in there with some scissors and rough them up more or your fingers because they tend to be cut off on a real flat so they can stencil. 
But it's a similar thing, and if, if you do that or pinch them or use the sides or edges, you can get a... It's the same type of hog bristle. Just liking this very much. Sometimes you just got to go into the layers and you find your little values and you just paint your fall. Paint fall. Yeah. As your fall falls. It does you. I do. Do I do? I do. All right, rinse, rinse, rinse. Now here and here, I want to do an interesting thing. I'm going to take my yellow out and then get a little of my white into it. Let's come on top and you do I do? She's she being just having the hardest time right now. You guys know her. If you paint with us for a while, she's usually not here. She's usually not here, but I feel like if she is, there's a reason, and I should just let her get a little security. Have her little space. Yeah, her little reassurances. Tough to have somebody young and cute come in and usurp our life. Just get a little bit of that bright. I like it. Just a few little spots of red where maybe some leaves could have fallen. And maybe some leaves are going to come here and hit the ground. You okay? Yeah, I'm gonna. How many of you have studio companions <laughs> that you have to hold and paint? She's come in a couple times this one. This, like, yeah, I think it's just time. been a hard week for her, is what it is. It's just been a challenging little week. All right. I think that's good. We'll call that a step. Yeah. We'll stand back and have a look at it. Have a nice little looky look. Whoops. Almost tripped over the cable. You okay? I know. I just... <laughs> I'm worried she's got to go potty. Okay. Sometimes they come and they have concerns if they've got to go potty. You don't want to get, you want to be a good dog. Very good dog. Very good, good dog. Okay. Can I go back to painting now? You okay? You feeling all right now? Got to put in some <coughs> trunks and stuff, sweetheart. All right, so we've got this great tree, and the tree is fantastic. Before you move on, I got to give people the steps, because it's a step time. Mm -hmm. It's a time mm -hmm. for stepping. Now we've got our tree. All right. Now remember on this one, I thought we'd add a nice little knot. To give not. some interest. So that'll be something I have to think about. And I'll Why get not a, add a knot? <laughs> why not? So I'm going to come here. 
with my dark color and uh, kind of begin to shape that out. My tree, I'm going to have a lot of blue in. I'm going to paint over your right shoulder there while I take the dog for a Twixie run. Over the right shoulder over or the, the left shoulder? Over your right. Okay. I'm going to be way up the tree. I'll go. I'll give you the full tree. All right. You can work that entire tree. Yeah, we're going to be on the full tree, and then we got the palette. Yep. Excellent. There you go. Be back. Thank you guys for understanding that she might need a walkies. You know. Uh, the little creatures in our life make things so much better, don't they? They teach us so much about compassion and caring. Sometimes we mortals could do a little better in those areas, couldn't we? I'm just doing rough little strokes because this has got to be bark, right? And so I don't want to be too... Too precious with it. I can get a little black where I need to have a little more coverage. All right. And just bring this over in a little circle. This is the uh, number eight filbert. You could use a cat's tongue. You just use any brush. You just want to have it be kind of a dry brush. And you're taking shorter strokes and you're kind of just implying the bark here. That. Bark has been implied. It's been implied in some ways, right? Come here with a little purple, perhaps. Talking about a knot in the tree. A rinse out. Now I can go back to my cheapy cheap brush. Yeah. And get a little of my blue on here and a little of my white. Slightly lighter. I can begin talking about the highlight and the rough texture of this tree. <laughs> Look at that rough texture. Look at this rough blue texture. But I mean, if you think about it, you've seen this. You've seen trees get kind of a blue in the forest as they're. As they dead fall, it's very strange, but when they're, you know, in the right light, with the right moss and everything on them in the right state, there you go. Yeah. But when you put it in a fall forest, just with the blue and the orange like this, wow, wow, it kaboom. comes together. Yeah. It is kaboom. Let's uh, come around here and... There we go. Speaking about a little hole, mm -hmm. that's a that's somebody could live there. Yes, they could. When you create spaces like bushes or distance or banks, when you make rivers like this, you imply that there are fish swimming in the river. Why wouldn't there be? And you imply that there are creatures living in the forest because you've painted a forest where they would want to live. Yes. Far from subdivisions. And the interference of man far, far away where things are quiet and we don't make so much noise they can't hear themselves think. Where they can lead their lives and dream their wildlife dreams. Keep going lighter. Gonna create a little bit of a sort of rough texture in the center. Mm -hmm. I'm not even really, I'm letting the brush kind of almost leave this like rough mark. And you guys can see that. Ooh. 
wow, that's some hot coffee. Did you get some hot coffee? I got some guy hot coffee. <laughs> Just... Oh my gosh, free guy coffee? It incendiarily burned the inside of my mouth. mouth. It was... My coffee is so good. It's like an autumn forest had a baby with Bambi. That's that's my my free guy. Is it cup of coffee? <laughs> uh, my cup of coffee is so good. It's like joy had a baby with sunrise. My cup of coffee is so good. It's like puppy breath. Had a baby with a fool's first steps. I got this all day as I continue to plant. Put up little highlights, little areas. Oops, that's way up high. There you go. There you go. I'll show that. Right, that area where the uh -huh. bright highlight is. The great highlight. The great bright highlight. That's pretty good. It's not bad, is it? Let's look at that and sip our coffee. Hug yeah. the dog again, who is just having the worst day. She is. She's this is about. really. She's usually very independent. It is the new. It's the new puppy, and it's just. She's like been hard on her. I am important. I'm in the pack. <laughs> I am important. You are important. Are we gonna take a photo of this one, or are we still going? Ah, well, we could take a photo of this well, before. Just, like, I'm not wanting to pre-step. I, still... I just wanted to sip some coffee. Okay, you can step coffee. To the concern. You, can you, mid... you call her and pet her and give her a suck. You can mid. You can mid coffee. We don't have to full. My coffee to step. isn't hot at all. <laughs> How did you get guy coffee and I got like? I I don't know. I think I I heated. I feel mine like I the... got Rachel coffee from friends. <laughs> I can I can bring for heat. <laughs> Although it looks like you're getting close. We are really close. So what's going to happen here is we have to start adding the moss and everything to this this wonderful fallen tree. Yeah. And then we'll finish with leaves here at the bottom. All right. So let's add some, Let's. well, this is blue. Let's add the greens in their own step. And it, oh, yeah? Yeah. Might as okay. well. Okay. We right? So here you are. This is where you're at right now. And now we're, we got to add some of that green moss that we like so much. It's a little different than what's on the trees behind it because it's tighter to the trunk. It's more of a surface moss than a lichen that's growing out and really having structure. So that's kind of fun. Another thing that you could add to your dead log if you had time is mushrooms. You know, if you had a little shelf mushroom to that log. Huh. Yeah, like a little like shelf mushroom. What are those called? Oysters? Oyster mushrooms kind of like on the log here a couple of places. You can make this log as interesting as you want yes <gasps> and anyway. is up hello hmm? australia australia's up <laughs> we've well, been on so long australia woke up well there, some of the new zealanders have been here for sure i am going to take a little of my phthalo green and some burnt sienna but less I'm going to bring this up, not all the way over the blue. Wow. The log is taking form. The log must take form. Just keep bringing this little moss up here. We'll have to also bring some on the far end. We have to think about which brush we're going to use for that. Probably a much smaller brush, but something with similar texture. Yeah. It's log, it's log, it's fun for girls and boys. <laughs> it is log, it's and it log. is fun for girls and boys. So I think, yeah, this set had this tiny brush. Better than good, it's wood. I'm just going to continue to get that green and brown, and we're going to come in and make sure that we have something on the far side of the 
of the log with this tiny little scruffy brush. This is, I don't even know what size this is. It's an eighth inch or something. It's just a tiny little scruffy brush. You could probably get away with this texture with my cloud brushes here. It would probably do a good job for you in this area. And I'm just making sure that we've got the green on both sides. You want it to come up a bit, you know, a few places because maybe it's more successful in parts, in areas. In areas. In areas. But not in some zones. But not in some zones. So a little bit of the green and brown and a lot of the yellow. Do, 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 do. Just kind of brushing that moss on. Let let the moss grow. Let that moss grow. Let that moss grow. Let this it grow is... up the tree. It's going to reclaim it soon. Right now. Right now, this is just a bridge maybe for some little woodland animals. I'm going to get my brush over here and it's got the green on it, but it's also got a little bit orange. Right. Moss is actually pretty colorful. Believe it or not. A couple of places it's more encompassing of the log. A couple places maybe it's got a little more orange in it. That's kind of interesting as it pulls it into the forest, right? It is. Unexpected moss. You know, I can always go a little deeper into the green. Places and kind of work that back through. Mmm, Anna just put some meatloaf in the oven. Oh, Anna, can I come to your house? <laughs> <laughs> meatloaf for dinner. <laughs> I love meatloaf. <laughs> <laughs> For future reference. Hmm. You know what? Hmm. We should have Sherpa meatloaf at an event. Because you are super meatloaf like. And not just you like you're a meatloaf connoisseur. Like you have like. Like there's there's like regular loaves and then there's the Sherpa meatloaf. Just having said that I have eaten this a lot in my marriage and am very fond of it. <laughs> <laughs> As your child walks by, please. Is is that a uh, sort cake, Miss Honey? Yeah, it's the oldest. She's, she's... No. day, Honey. Oh, she's short cake sleeping. Okay, I am taking so long. I know it's okay. It's been a long day. It's a painting. It's a great painting. I'm it's really wonderful enjoying painting. This. We should come on the other side of it. Uh, and I might use my grass comb just to give me some control. You know. With some of these light kind of colors that could be over here. See, meatloaf's really my speed. I feel like steak is too high achieving of a meat. I need something that's a little more lazy. Something that just kind of loafs. 
meatloaf is perfect. I think I was okay with steaks until Facebook started showing me all those like cows that were saved. <laughs> <laughs> And they're little dancing, and the fact that they had toys, I was like, oh, no. Facebook, no, I... you ruined it for me again. I'm just uh, making sure that this far side of the tree also has some, like, light and moss on it, right? Just painting, keep adding, you know, add a little white and yellow to it. Got some highlights going. Those are fantastic mosses. It's painting a little, little personality to the yeah, moss. Yeah, that's pretty cool. This is the grass coming. I'm just using that to give me some edge control. Hmm. That's all that was happening there. Very much enjoy that. Very, very much enjoy that. Yeah. Put a little bit of extra. I got some phthalo blue into that and I didn't rinse it off. So it gave me that really kind of dimensional glow shadow of like reflected light. It was sort it of nice. dimensional glow shadow. <laughs> did. All I'm right, let's take a picture, and then we have leaves left, and we're done, guys. It was a big day. Again, tomorrow is like a little hour fun day, hour, hour 20. We're just going to come in. Maybe not even that. Might be 40. Oh, I shouldn't have said that. Knock on wood. Knock on art. Um, <laughs> but it's a shorter day, and we're going to be doing kind of a spooky, something different, but somehow weirdly the same, and um, uh, I think that's going to be... Super fun. Look at this go. All now right. Now we're up to 14. 14, 14. A Let's take our cad red and take 14. our the ox purple. Let's put them together and paint some more leaves. These are leaves now. Yes, they're leaves now. These are oh. leaves now. Leaves. Is this the part of the show that breaks out into a musical number? And you're yes. like, wait, this has never been a musical before. How come I'm watching a show that's now musical? <laughs> well, musical would imply that I could carry a tune, but I still will sing. These are leaves now. All in leaves now. Please don't forget the leaves. All right, so we're going to go more into the red. A little bit of yellow into the orange and catch some light here. I'm just grabbing some cad red and kind of maybe on this one adding some zhuzh. 
That's very zhuzhy. Just, you know, the paint's out anyways. I might as well enjoy it. Yeah. That's good at Art contrast. Sherpa, the musical. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. Never content ID'd <laughs> because we don't sing that well. Ah, oh, look at that. Well, that's just a happy little painting, isn't it? That is. All right. We did it. You did it. You got to sign it, though. We got to oh, I got to dry it to sign it. You dry it to sign it. I got to dry it to sign that's it. That's okay. You can dry it. I dry it to sign it. You can, you can sign on the other side, too. But she's going to she gonna dry that side because she wants to sign over there in the in the red bushes. She signs on the right-hand side a lot. I don't know why. She's got a little copy over there. She's got her thing over there. She's like, what am I doing? She sees what I... But guys, thank you for joining us. Don't forget to check out the link in the description below. And if you're willing to help me write a letter that you would be willing to come to an event that we would have, uh, email support at theartsherpa.com and I will get you some information on how to help writing a letter for us. Because all the if you've ever been to an event or you'd be interested in coming to an event and you'd be willing to write a little a letter, letter that says you'd be willing to come to an event then uh that would help us that would help us and we'll <laughs> we'll tell you the deets on how I'm to do that take a little blue and white together because i feel like those will pop right here i've got my number one monogram liner which i like to sign my painting with and then come here in the corner and just give myself a little signature There we go. We did it. You did it. It's a big project and we did That's it. It's a great project. It's a big project. It's a fallen tree in a fall forest. We did it. I think that's super fun. Uh, I have the original that I pre-painted, uh, recorded, so we might release that as a time lapse sometime. So be sure and go by and thumb that up if you see that. Um, you have anything you want to say, John, before we leave? These Thank beautiful you, guys. People for we the day? really appreciate it. We love seeing you guys here. Love spending this time with you. There's pretty much nothing we wouldn't rather do with our afternoon. I would love to see you guys tomorrow. Tomorrow. Or to, tomorrow's. It's a little earlier. It's at noon Eastern day. Uh, Eastern daylight time. Yep. Standard Eastern standard. You know, time Eastern time. time. Eastern time. Noon this. at Eastern time. Really fun painting. <sighs> Take a deep breath. <sighs> be sure and share your painting with me you can come by the facebook group or instagram or any of the places and show me heck you can show me on tiktok now yeah. <sighs> be good to yourselves be good to each other and i'd like to see you at an easel really soon Bye bye